So hello everyone for the second session for the day five for the Avenue Districts Training Seminar. It's going to be for the public relations and editorial team will be conducting this uh, session. Before I hand over this session to them, I want to first of all remind you to uh, rename yourself with your name and with your club name. Also, you will be dropping in the participation form. Make sure to fill it. And also, we'll be sharing the virtual background with all of you. Please make sure to put it on because you want to see all of your beautiful faces. And please make sure to uh, actively participate with the session. Over to you, PR and authority. Uh, I think Budvi seems to be having a connection problem. Uh, so let's just give you one minute and then let's start. She's able to join. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yes, okay, we can hear. Okay. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. So, hello everyone. Good evening. Good evening. So, welcome to the Avenue Training Seminar from the Public Relations and Editorial Team. Uh, first, I would like to start off by introducing the team. Can we move on to the next slide? Yeah. Okay. So from the PR team, we have our assistant uh, district road track representative, road track to pass president, Sasi Daldenia. And we have our sergeant at arms, road track to Ravidu Benara. And uh, from our joint directors, we have road track to Abdullah and myself plus road tractor pass president Bila Kapadirage, and we have road tractor media pass president Deshan Sivatana, and road tractor media pass president Samita Chaduranga. Moving on to the next slide. Okay, so guys, let's start with what is public relations. So public relations, is way how organizations, companies, it can be NGOs, anything, and also consider how we communicate media. Okay. So as a PR specialist, communicates with the target with an aim to create a, a, and also to strong relationship. So guys, in when considering our logos, the road track logo, in this slide, as you can see, the R, the copyright, uh, copyright should be taken into consideration, okay? So the uh, you, as you can see here, you can uh, see the updated master brand signature logo with the registered mark. This is very important to notice this mark. Whenever you are putting any PR materials out, this 
signature logo should be uh, considered. Okay. And can, when talking about the avenue logos, clubs are you all are free to design your opening logos and wish. Okay. And uh, moving on to the next slide. Okay, I like Abdullah to continue this of the presentation. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, am I audible? And can you guys see me? Or uh, can yes. anyone? Yeah, yeah. all okay. good. Yeah, thanks, Samadhi. Okay, yeah. So, like Virgil was mentioning, this time we had done a change. So, that is the master brand logo has got the registered trademark. So, it's better if you guys can actually update your club logos to include the registered trademark so that uh, it reflects the Rotract as a brand much better. And also when you're designing the logos and when you're using it, make sure that you have the breathing space, like we have indicated, a breathing space of capital R from the Rotract word. That should be the breathing space around the logo. And as you can see, we are showing some variations of the logos that you can use. So you can see that the master brand signature you can use in multiple colors. You can use it with a placeholder or you can use it as it is transparent. And uh, of course, we have included all of these in the PR booklet as well. So you guys can refer to it and get to know about it much better. So moving on to the next slide. Yeah, so as you can see, we, the, the signature system applies also for the Rotrack clubs. So you can see the registered trademark, which you guys will have to use with your PR materials, except in the case of simplified logo. For the simplified logo, you guys don't need to use the registered trademark, but for the master brand logo, the master brand signature logo, that is, you guys have to use the registered trademark so that it shows the brand much better. Uh, moving on. Yeah, and also this term, as you all know, the presidential team is create hope in the world. Last time it was Imagine Rotary. So please make sure to update and use the new presidential team when you're designing all of your campaigns. And also similar to how we mentioned before, make sure that you use the new master brand logo when you're designing the materials. Uh, moving on. Yeah, so the club banner, talking about the club banner, it's almost the same as last year, except some of you may have noticed that last year there was a small typo in the word chartered. So it was chartered actually, instead of chartered. So make sure that uh, that mistake is not there in your club banners and make sure to update it in case there is. And also anyway, you have to update it if the, the master brand signature is not with the registered trademark. So you will have to update it anyway. So we have included this club banner in the PR media materials, so you guys can check it out and get it from the brand center and update your club banners accordingly. Uh, moving on. Yeah, so typography and colors. So this is the recommendations given by Rotary International. So you guys are free to use this and it's recommended to use this, but you guys can use any of the font families that you guys prefer. So if you guys prefer that, if you guys feel that Frutiger or Sentinel or Open Sans does not match your brand identity or it does not match your PR materials for a specific event, you guys are free to actually come up with your own fonts. But as a sort of a baseline or sort of a recommendation, it's better to use Frutiger, Sentinel, and all of the fonts that Rotary International recommends. And also Cranberry, this is the hex code uh, that is mentioned on the screen. So that is the brand color of Rotrek. So please make sure to use Cranberry as much as possible. It's good if you guys can use Cranberry in your marketing materials, especially in terms of logo. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, you can use a Rotract logo in the three colors, Cranberry, black, and white. You cannot use any other colors in the Rotract logo. So make sure that the logos that you're using are of the right color. Uh, moving on. Yeah, and as we mentioned before, the presidential team. And as you can see, the, the guidelines clearly mention that the R breathing space should be around the whole logo. Uh, this is something we notice in most of the clubs that they have actually not taken the proper breathing space. So this is sort of a guideline and that you guys should actually consider the breathing space around the logo so that it'll give a much better image to the brand and make the logo stand out actually. Uh, moving on, we'll actually discuss this more in detail in the future slide, so yeah. Yes, so these are the logo usage best practices. So this is the same content that was given last year as well. So as you all know, you cannot 
you, you cannot use the logo in a way that the contrast is not maintained. So for example, pink on pink is not gonna be much legible, right? So it's better if you guys can actually focus on contrast aspects as well. And also use it without outlines like it's shown here or special effects behind the logos, shadows, gradients, anything. You're not, you're not allowed to alter the logo in any way. You're supposed to use the logo as it is. You cannot use a placeholder which covers the whole logo as shown in this, which is why it's important to maintain the breathing space around the logo so that you do not violate this logo principle. Uh, and also you cannot invert the logo. And uh, yeah, so correct usage, they have given some examples as well, which you guys can end up in your marketing materials. And also talking about the uh, using the presidential theme along with the uh, logo, you're not allowed to use the vertical presidential theme in lockup mode that is uh, side by side with the Rotract logo. But if you're using the presidential theme in the vertical aspect, you're supposed to use it in both ends of the post. Uh, so this will be discussed much in detail in the future slides as well. Uh, moving on. Yeah, so we, we mentioned this specifically so that you guys will actually consider this in your future post because we noticed even recently, a lot of clubs have actually violated like the incorrect usage. Please, please make sure that you guys actually keep a, a space of R around the whole logo. And for, to be safe, actually take more space than the letter R so that you'll be on the safe side. And it'll look much better because when you, when you cram the logo inside a placeholder, it kind of restricts the logo too much. So better give it a lot more breathing space so that it stands out even more. And we also recommend you, if you can, if possible, use a transparent logo. Do not enclose the logo within a container. Like try to use it with the trans without any placeholder as much as possible because that way it'll, it'll be much more simple and minimal. So. If we, but in case you have to actually use a placeholder, for example, some backgrounds do not allow you to use the logo as it is. So it's better if you can use a placeholder in that instances. But when you're using the placeholder, make sure that you keep the minimum breathing space all around the logo. Uh, yeah, since I rushed all of these parts, I would like to ask whether any of you has any questions up to now. I know that I rushed it up to now, but yeah, since there's a lot of things to discuss with all of you. Any questions? Feel free to drop it in the chat. Oh, unmute and talk. Um, seems like there's no questions. So yeah, we can go. Okay, so we have given you guys some examples about how you can actually use the logos. So we have given you some examples showing you how you can use the logo. That is the club logo without any other materials, that is without the presidential theme or without using it with other clubs as well. So when you're using the logo, make sure that there's a breathing space like we are shown here. Uh, and also the placeholder, there should be the breathing space around it. Uh, so yeah, we have given you the best usage cases we have mentioned in the slide. So you can see how the contrast like on the white side, make sure that you use either the pink, the cranberry or the black logo. And if it's a light background, make sure to use the darker variant of the logo so that it's much visible and much more legible. And when it comes to a black background, make sure that you maintain contrast as we have shown here as well. So focus on contrast. Contrast is a very key thing when it comes to designing posters because we had to show Rotract as a brand, right? Because after all, it's Rotract that we are designing it for. So we should show that it's Rotract, which is doing the event or the materials that you guys are putting out in your clubs. So it should show, it should showcase Rotract as a brand after all, which is why make sure that the Rotract logo is much legible and much clear as possible. Uh, moving on, the following sets of slides will also have some other examples. So as you can see, even this slide shows you how you can use it in lockup mode with the presidential theme. And as you can see, you're supposed to use the horizontal version of the presidential theme, not the vertical version when you're using the lockup in this way. So if you're using a lockup, make sure that it's horizontal. Do not use a vertical logo when in a lockup mode. Uh, moving on. Yeah, so this slide shows you how you can use it if you want to use it vertically. You guys can use it on both ends of the post so that it'll stand out much better. You are not allowed to use the uh, vertical logo in lockup mode with the uh, Rotary Club logo. Uh, and we have mentioned it in the remarks as well, so you can see it. And of course, you guys will get this in the PR booklet. So yeah, stay tuned for it. Okay. Moving on to the next slide. The next slide will actually show you about uh, 
the master brand logo. So this comes mostly when you're doing joint projects. So when you're doing joint projects, you cannot use your club logo. That means you cannot use all of the club logos because then that's going to make it kind of a disaster, right? Like if you put Rotary Club of Toronto, Rotary Club of uh, San Francisco and everything in one line, it's not going to look much attractive, right? So which is why we, it's recommended to use the Rotary master brand logo in these cases. And when you're using the master brand logo, make sure that you mention the club names in the footer of the post. So you can mention an initiative by the Rotary Clubs of so-and-so, for example, United Cities, an initiative by the Rotary Clubs of United City, Manchester, San Francisco, et cetera. So you guys can mention it that way so that it will be much more attractive and much more appealing. Uh, moving on. Uh, uh, you had to move forward. <laughs> okay, yeah. So if you're doing a joint project with Rotary and Interact, make sure that you place it in the order of Rotary, Rotaract, and Interact. And also make sure that when you're writing, listing down the names in the footer, make sure that you list down all of the Rotary Club names in alphabetical order, followed by the Rotaract Clubs in alphabetical order, and then followed by the Interact Clubs in alphabetical order. So we have highlighted these points actually. And also make sure that you place the logos on top. Do not place it on the bottom because we noticed that some clubs have actually used the Rotaract logo, Club logo on the bottom, which is a very bad practice. So please make sure that the Rotaract logo is there on the top of the post. And also remember that you can place the logo in any alignment. So you can place it on the left, on the right, or in the center. But when you're using the Rotary and Interact logo along with it, make sure that you place it accordingly, like we are shown in the post. And also ensure that the breathing space around all of those logos are maintained properly, uh, because otherwise it's kind of kind of ruin their design. The reason we focus on breathing space a lot is because it kind of ruins the design when you don't focus on breathing space, because it kind of draws your attention too much to it. So the logo should actually stand out, but it shouldn't be too distracting. So which is why breathing space helps a lot. And it also helps you make sure that the road track word is not cut and stuff like that. So which is why ensure that you guys do not actually use the Rotaract logo without a proper breathing space, along with the Rotary and Interact logos as well. Uh, yeah, and also when you're doing a project uh, with the other clubs or in your own club, make sure that if you can as much as possible, use the Rotary area focuses logo in the promotional materials. Uh, and also remember, like would be said before, we do not have avenue logos this time because we decided to remove it kind of, because it sort of creates a rivalry between all of the avenues. And it also kind of makes it a hassle when designing posters because sometimes the avenue logos do not match the design that you have created. So instead of giving you guys that burden of adapting to the avenue logos, we decided to remove it for, as a whole so that you guys can design all of the posters to your own free will. But if you guys still insist on using an avenue logo, you guys feel free to create your own logo for your club. And also for Instagram, if you guys want to actually use an avenue logo for the highlights, you guys are free to create uh, an avenue logo for your clubs in that case as well. So from the district, we will not be providing you with an avenue logo uh, for the reasons we mentioned before. Uh, but yeah, you guys are free to do uh, create an avenue logo if you feel that it's actually required for your club. Yes, uh, moving on. And yeah, so this is the recommended club letterhead. So we have we insist on put placing the Rotaract logo on top along with the create hope in the world. That is the presidential theme on the right in the vertical mode. And uh, you guys will, if you're using this recommended club letterhead, uh, make sure that you place all of your designations, contacts, club addresses, and all of the contact details basically on the footer of the letterhead. But also you guys are free to actually create your own letterhead if you feel that you guys have to stand out even more from the district. So you guys can create your own letterhead, uh, but make sure that you guys get our approval so that we can check whether it's actually up to the par. Uh, so yeah, you can send it to the district PR email and we will approve it for you. So in case you want uh, to use a custom letterhead. Uh, so yeah, talking about the letterhead, you guys can either use the recommended club letterhead or you guys can use a letterhead of your own design but make sure that you get it approved from us before so that uh, in case there's any sort of an issue, we can actually fix it before you start mass distributing it. So that, that way we save a lot of hassle and trouble. Uh, moving on. Yeah, so these are the Rotary area focus logos. So these are mostly, you can, you can if you guys are conducting your projects and your, your campaigns and stuff, or 
with keeping an area focus specifically in your mind, make sure that you guys use all of these logos. So it kind of shows that you guys are sub, uh, promoting Rotrack, the areas that it actually focuses on even better. So it kind of highlights uh, the projects that you do even more. So you guys can uh, actually, uh, we actually recommend you guys to actually use this area of focus logos so that it makes it, it highlights a project even better. Uh, moving on. Yeah, so these are the black and white, the grayscale version of these logos. So sometimes the PR materials do not actually allow you to use a colored version. So you guys can also use the black and white logos so that it will actually adapt better to your PR materials. Uh, moving on. Yeah, so these are this is a color palette of the Rotary area of focus. So it's clearly mentioned about what color you should use. And as long as you actually use the logos that we have provided in the brand center, you're good to go actually. So do not try to be too smart and create your own logos. So try as much as possible to stick with the brand center logos that we have provided because that way you save a lot of trouble. And that way there'll be no issues uh, in terms of design. Uh, so up to now, is there any other questions that you guys may have? Uh, I know that even this part was actually rushed, but then again, we are two avenues, so there's not enough time for us. <laughs> Yes, so anything to ask from us? Uh, seems like no. So yeah, let's move on with the next slide. Yeah, so even the area of focuses has some guidelines on using it. Uh, so make sure that you follow these guidelines when you're actually using these logos. Uh, so I'm not going to expand much into it because it's almost 8.30 and I have to hand the flow. Uh, so yeah, so let's move on from this as well. Yeah, so talking about photography, as you all may be aware already, People of Action is something that Protract actually uh, promotes a lot. So they actually expect the photographies to be of a certain quality. So as much as possible, make sure that you guys adapt to the People of Action theme when you're taking the photographs. So that it's much more effective in showing that Protract is much a much better volunteering organization and much more community based organization that helps to uplift the lives of people so that so when you take the people of action the way that they recommend the guidelines uh, so that way it shows that it's actually about how you guys are actually interacting in the world so that that's basically the guidelines that they provide so all of the photography methods that they have asked you to take the pictures actually show all of you working in the project uh, so it's recommended if you guys can actually use the people of action team uh, photographs in your project campaigns, uh, but uh, do not actually take it as a hassle. So it's okay if you guys do not use the people of action team. So some of you may have a question whether is it okay to post normal pictures in the Facebook and other social media. Of course, you cannot. You can actually post uh, all of those other pictures as well, but it's recommended if you can to use the people of action guidelines when you're taking the picture. So that way it shows you guys actually working in your projects. So that way you stand out even better. Uh, moving on. So the next slide will actually show you how you can use the, some examples. So as it, people of action actually recommends you not to look at the camera. So I know it's difficult taking pictures like that, but then again, it shows people working. So that's the motivation behind it. So they want to show people actually working in an initiative and people working together. So that's the idea behind people of action. So as much as possible, try to use people of action, but even if you are unable to, it's not an issue, but try to as much as possible. That's all we can say about it. Uh, so moving on to the next part, it will be about uh, social media guidelines. So I hand it back to Budvi to continue with. Budvi. Uh, seems like Budvi has a connection issue. Okay. So up to now, are there any questions from you guys? Any questions, anyone? Seems like no, right? Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so when you're using Facebook, uh, so Facebook is the platform where every person in the city is actually in. So every town they can hurry in layman terms is there in Facebook. So when you're using Facebook, uh, 
of course, uh, I think you all may already be aware of Meta. So Meta is a company that has acquired Facebook and Instagram. So Meta has a tool called Meta Business Suit. So that actually makes it much more convenient for you all to plan all of your PR materials when it comes to Facebook. So you can actually schedule all of your posts. You can see the best time to post. It'll show you based on your based on the members. That means your followers. It'll show you what's the most optimum time to post a specific post. So for example, for some clubs, it's 7 8 p.m. Because that may be because they are universe. For example, if it's a university-based club, their lectures may be over at seven. So most of the people are active at seven. So it depends on different reasons why the follower accounts are active at that specific time. So Meta Business Suite actually provides you all of these details, insights, and everything. So it will actually help you to improve your PR campaigns much more effectively. So when you're uh, when you're using Facebook, make sure that you try as much as possible to use Meta Business Suite and other such tools because that way it makes it much more convenient and simple to post all of your major and posters and PR materials. And also the other advantage is that you can schedule both Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Uh, you can do it, all of those advanced features as well. Uh, so when you're using Facebook, make sure that you have a monthly strategy so that you actually do not deviate much from it. Uh, and also focus on increasing your page environment because Reactions, comments, tags, sharing, those are really important to help you build your Facebook page much more. Uh, so sometimes there are posts which do not have any reactions or maybe likes, maybe comments. It actually has nothing. So that kind of brings it as a black mark to not exactly a black mark, but that's kind of a negative aspect, right? Like for example, if there's an event and if no one has liked your post, that kind of shows that no one's interested in it, right? Uh, so yeah, so it's better if you guys can actually focus on uh, focus on improving the involvement. So maybe you can ask your club members to actually like and react and engage in your pages. So that way it will be much better and it will show that your club is very active and engaging. And yeah, seems like Budvi is back. So Budvi will be taking over. So Budvi. Yes. Thanks, Abdullah. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so um, we'll talk about Instagram. So, Melkas, before uh, we focus on in uh, social media, what do you all do basically when it's about a project? What's the first thing that comes up to your mind when it's when you have to plan a project? When it comes to PR, in the PR perspective, you all basically want to make a post, right? So. Uh, when when comes to uh, from uh, past years to right now, post alone can't actually uh, uh, you know market uh, or any initiative that you have come up. Uh, you can't. It's not actually enough for you to market your project. Okay, so the best thing, the best way is to go about it is to you know. Uh, Check in, check anything that is trending. Do something different when it comes to uh, your PR. Okay, so Instagram. Instagram is a platform where you know uh, short videos. Um, your you know uh, more like towards stories, more engaging content is more visible to other people. So um, when you uh, so compared to Facebook. Instagram has a feed. As you can see, you can see like three grid posts and everything in Insta. So it's 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 actually different from uh, compared to other social media uh, application. So if you show, uh, if you say, you know, uh, more reels, more stories, uh, probably use um, tools like GIFs, you can get more engagement from your users. If we uh, uh, like uh, show people in action, that can actually help you to grow your Instagram page. Okay, and this also this specific social media uh, applications will allow you to see what is your page involvement. If you can go to your um, in your settings, there is a um, tool called Insight. In there, you can see. Um, 
from if you can like see for a month for like three months you can see how your reactions are how your comments are your tags are you know how many views you can see um like a division of female and male like that you can from that you can see uh uh, how many reactions your posts are getting, how many reactions your stories are getting. Normally, Instagram, stories are more engaging, more than posts, okay? So, uh, and also, if, even if you put a short video, um, you can see, like, how many views it has and all of that. Those are important things. So, based on um, the social media uh, page, you can actually... Uh, use different kind of methods to see based on the, these applications, you can see a way to market, uh, probably brand your uh, project or focus on PR. Okay. And also we would like you to be advised that you can do any public relation project that you can promote uh, your interaction towards the club page. Can be stories, anything. Because it's, because more the followers, more uh, your um, uh, the users, the people that who are who will uh, you know it will increase your followers, so that uh, you can see a lot of uh, PR and everything. Okay, so that's about Instagram. So moving on uh, to the next slide. Okay, so TikTok. This is more towards, you know, uh, fun and video content creation sort of platform. So we talked about Facebook, we talked about Instagram. Now it's about TikTok. So yes, when it comes to TikTok, people think this, you know, it's around dancing and everything, which is in a good way, you can see how we can use this platform to, you know, um, to get your members engaged, to how we can, you know, uh, promote or your uh, any initiative that is in each each and every avenue. So in in this uh, social media tool, you can use there are sorts of um, different templates you can use, and also it's recommended for you to, you know, uh, always be. Um, in touch with this uh, TikTok application because it's always changing and the same trend will not be the same trend that is uh, from the next in the next few months so it's it's recommended for you all to check popular soundtracks check popular hashtag check popular i would say dance moves which can which you can utilize them in order to you know promote your uh, project okay so even if you search on TikTok, you can search like popular uh, TikTok trends, soundtracks like that. So you can use them to promote your project. And it's best. And also you have to keep in mind when using club image and, you know, member pictures, it doesn't always have to be formal, you know, because TikTok is more into fun sort of this thing. But um, you have to make sure that none of the parties are offended or anything and um, be careful when you're using music also because sometimes for Sri Lanka uh, some uh, uh, these uh, technical things you know it doesn't allow us we, it can be seen to other countries but sometimes music uh, some music uh, records are not allowed in Sri Lanka so be mindful of that as well and yes, moving on to LinkedIn. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so LinkedIn. LinkedIn is more towards the professional side of road track when it comes to PR, okay? So um, in this way, you can, you know, you can draw potential stakeholders and, you know, you can uh, build your network so this is more towards we are focused on the professional side of things in road track. And you, you can also encourage your members, create a linking account. And 
there's actually an option where you can uh, put your uh, clubs under volunteering so so basically it's building uh, the network okay and uh, yeah uh, let's move on to the next slide okay so so when talking about tips and tricks guys so in here um, so we know there are like a lot of tools like Canva, Figma and everything, but you need to be very careful when it's free. That means it's free to another person as well. Okay. I have seen a lot of clubs. Uh, they used to um, have conflicts also when there's the same play that is going on. So you need to be very careful when you're using a template. So, yeah. So. And another thing I want to add on to that is, um, and uh, the other platforms that I would like to say is that uh, if you're focusing on Instagram, there are applications called uh, Mojo, In Stories, 500 Stories. These applications will help you to, you know, um, grow your pages. You can increase your followers, you can increase your engagement uh, in towards the, uh, when considering your, uh, if you consider to increase your follower base, okay? So, and also we would like to recommend that um, proper usage of artworks and, you know, it's, it's all about the quality actually, not the quantity, okay? So we would recommend you all to properly go through the guidelines and, you know, uh, focus on design principles, and uh, also be sure of uh, when considering all these social media platforms, try to check in uh, what's the best time to post, what are the peak covers. So Facebook, Instagram, then it's TikTok, LinkedIn, everything. Okay. So yeah. And um, yeah, uh, Ab Abdullah, uh, I'd like to do a down a few things from this slide. Yeah, so talking about design principles, so when you're talking, when you're designing a post, make sure that you focus on the alignments, typography, consistency, hierarchy. There are a lot of design principles that actually will alleviate your design. So it will make it to a much better level. So it will make your good designs, great designs. So focus on design principles when you're designing posters. Also try to use SVG images as possible because SVGs are vector images. So those vector images can be rescaled. So no matter what side you take it up to, it will still retain the quality that it persists, pertains actually. Yeah, so SVG images and other advantages, you can easily change the colors. So if in case you need to change the color really import really fast, so it'll be much easier to change it in SVG. So focus on the quality. Yeah, of course, focus on the quality. It's not about quantity, so focus on quality. And of, I think all of you are familiar with AI tools such as ChatGPT, Midjourney, Dell. There's a lot of AI tools. So try to use most of those, but don't actually overuse it because when you overuse it, it kind of takes out the personal touch out of it. So some people don't actually like people overusing AI tools and stuff. So it's better if you guys can try to limit it to some extent, but if it makes your life convenient or as much as, as, much as possible, try to use it, as, but don't try to overuse it. Uh, for with regard to posters, designs and stuff, you can use Midjourney, Leonardo AI. There's a lot of AI tools which will make you generate much better images. So you can use all of those. But when it comes to content, this is mainly the issue with content actually. So don't overuse ChatGPT because people can understand that it's written from ChatGPT. Because if so after at some point, if the style completely changes, then people will obviously understand that you have been using an AI to do it. Uh, so try to limit it as much as possible and then you'll be much good to go. And yeah, I think the other things are pretty self-explanatory, so we're not gonna make, take much time because the next thing that we have to tell you all is something which is really fun and really exciting. Uh, so moving on to the next slide. Okay. So yes, so we want to talk about our new project. So this is called Branding. So I think some of you may already be familiar with Branding. So it was there last year as well. So last year, it was just a workshop series. So this time we thought of actually adding a twist to this event. We thought of making a competition. 
So in this competition, actually, all of your all of your clubs can put teams of three to five people, and they will be competing amongst each other in a branding design term. So branding design term basically means a competition where you guys will have to come up with PR materials, content, and everything. Uh, but you guys, the specialty is that you guys can in the first round actually, you guys can choose any event that you want, and you guys can create PR materials for it. Uh, and based on that, the top 10 winners will be selected to the final round. So the final round is a 12 or 24 hour competition. So within 12 or 12, 24 hours, you guys will come have to come up with PR materials for a for an event or brand name or something that we decide. So the final round is going to be a time based event. So that's kind of the challenge. And talking about this competition, there's a big prize money in line for this competition. So stay excited because this is a competition where you guys can show your PR skills. So you guys can show how good your club is in PR. So the winning three clubs will get grand prizes. So this way it will actually motivate you guys to improve your PR skills and improve your brand image of your clubs. And also talking about workshops. So there will be workshops since there's a competition to help you guys improve your skills in order to compete in this competition. So we thought of conduct, uh, conducting these workshops uh, with, uh, with the help of industry experts. So that way you will get the industry knowledge about how you guys can design better posters, plan better marketing campaigns, and come up with better quality content for your club materials. So we encourage all of your clubs to actually participate in this event once we start it. And since you guys will have prize money, which you guys can actually use for your club initiatives or for your team initiatives, depending on your club. So that way you guys will get the bragging rights as well. So you can say that you have one brand in and you are the champions of it. So this is about the PR project. And of course, uh, you get the detailed information about this project in the near future. So we'll be starting this event really shortly. Uh, so we invite all of you to actually participate in this event and win big and win proud and make your clubs much more proud. Okay, yeah. So now that's basically the end of uh, PR part. So now we'll be moving on to the questions and answers. Uh, so yeah, any questions that you guys have up to now? And also on a side note, uh, we have mentioned the PR and editorial WhatsApp group link. All you have to do is just open WhatsApp camera, just the camera in WhatsApp. And if you just scan it, it'll automatically add you to the group. So you can add, enter the group that way. Or you guys can, if you want, you can uh, use the link, uh, which I'll drop right now. I'll drop a link or else you can click on this link and join the WhatsApp group as well. But it's much more convenient to actually use your WhatsApp camera and join the group because, or any QR code standard for, for that matter, because that way it'll take you without typing any content on the screen. Yeah, so any questions that you guys have to ask from us? Anything? Any questions, anything which is not clear? Uh, we can clarify it for you. I think some of you may be having issues about the Avenue logos and also about the master brand signature. So if you guys have anything, please feel free to actually ask it from us. Uh, seems like there's no questions. So yeah, so thank you guys for paying attention to our part. And now we'll be moving on to the editor team. So yeah, over to you editors. Hi everyone, thank you so much Abdullah. Um, so it's been a long session from uh, PR directors uh, covering a, a bunch of 32 slides. Uh, I am still up, everyone listening, because none of you all have turned on your cameras. Uh, I don't see anyone interacting, anyone asking questions. Does it mean that you all understood everything or does it mean that uh, you all were not listening? I hope you all are still there. Are you all there? Okay, I'll have, I have a question to ask. So at that time, you all have to come up with some answers and you know, answer it in some minor time. Right? So we'll move on to the team introduction. Right. Presenting you the editorial team of uh, District uh, 3220. So you have uh, Shashita. She is the assistant district growth Truck representative, and you have Rabindu, he's a sergeant at arms. Um, and as editors, you have Akhil, you have Anudi, and you have myself, Latushanan. Right? So, 
throughout this year, you all are going to work with us. And no matter what, uh, anything you have to ask, you all are always free to drop down and ask to us. Right. Let's move on to the next slide. Right. So this is the section where I was telling that there's an interactive session that's waiting for you all. So this is a Q&A. Okay. There's a question in the screen called, who is an editor? Right. Is it a designer? a photographer, a content creator, or a writer. Now, I want you all to take the chat box and answer to this question and make sure that we uh, district officials know that you all are still awake and still listening to this. All right, so there's someone who's listening to this, all in one, kind of an all-rounder to be honest, okay? All of them, all right, okay? All in one package, all around, all around, all around. Right, 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 right. All right, okay. Well, lovely. Y'all up, y'all up, y'all listening. Thank you. Thank you for telling that. All right, then let's move on and let's see uh, who is an editor actually in this. Shall we move to the next slide? Right. The editor is the one who collects information that is ready to be released by the club, create, write content that expounds the club's image, and make sure that the content created goes into tandem with the standards set by the district, right? So if I have to tell whether you have answered correctly or not, most of the time, uh, not all rounder, but can cover everything too. Because uh, as a writer, you might require good design. So you can be a designer if required, right? You can be a photographer to cover events, photos to add in your write ups, or you can be a good content creator as well, right? So let's move on to the next part to see the role of the editor in detail. So the role of the editor goes as uh, should be someone who should be able to write, proofread, disseminate all the written content of the club. Okay, so this contents it can be released in the form of uh, social media captions, emails, articles, blogs, or even newsletters, right? And also make sure that you editors are very much responsible people. Yes, As a responsible individuals, use appropriate terminology and abbreviations with regards to information surrounding the club and district, right? And make sure the club's image is projected to the content that's being written by you all, right? Let's move to the next slide. What is the relationship between PR and editorial? So the content creation part is actually something like a synergy between the public relations and the editorial team, okay? And while the editorial team is responsible for whatever the write-ups you all do, whatever all the written contents are the responsibility of an editorial team. And while that happens there, it's the duty of the PR team to craft posters and post that reflect a specific thematic area or a project, okay? And all the creative decisions have to be collectively made by both the PR and editorial team. So editors don't give up on those things. You all make collective decisions, make creative decisions with your PR directors, okay? And in a nutshell, in a nutshell, both are indispensable to each other, right? You can have your competitions, but you are one. With that being said, I'll pass on my presentations to the other editor, Akin. Over to you, bro. Thank you so much, Madhushanan. So with regards to this section, I am going to speak about articles. So articles play a quintessential role in presenting your club's image in the form of written content. So like social media posts and all of these other image-based means of showcasing your club's image, articles play an equally pivotal role in showcasing your club's image in written form. So as mentioned in this slide, when you start off by writing an article, 
always make sure that your article has a word count of between 450 to 500 words because the short ideas, the more engaging you can make. And most articles in newspapers go in the form of press releases and editorials. So you've got to keep it concise and in a way that people actually engage with it and read it. So always make sure that it has more than two revisions because it's going out into a much larger demographic. And be mindful of your grammar, spelling, punctuation, because these are what essentially based off the quality of your writing. And always make sure that your sentences aren't too long because people aren't fond of reading long sentences. So when you keep your sentences between 10 to 20 words or even less, that content is broken down in a way that people can digest that information. So, but also essentially make sure to get your best writers for the job because when you give novice writers and people who had no prior experience, it tends to reflect on the quality of writing. So, I mean, anyone can write, but writing something meaningful and coherent for a wider audience takes a lot of skill and practice along with past experience. Um, next slide, please. All right, so this section focuses on blogs. So for clubs that do have websites or blogs essentially, um, from what I've seen, more often than not, there have been very long articles that have been shared over the course of, um, I think, multiple weeks. And from, because I was a former editor myself in my own club, and most people don't engage when these blogs are too long. So as mentioned here, we again aim to keep the word count between 450 to 500 words. And your titles for your blogs should be very short and very catchy, like something that sort of gives people an energetic you know, reaction when they read it. Like let's say the topic could be between five to 10 phrases or even less. And essentially when you put out your blogs, always make sure to have a cover image or a featured image that gives people a general overview of what is being presented within your written content. So this could be something on reflecting a project you've done. Okay, as mentioned on the top, you can write. So if it's for a road track project, you can have something including your club members. And if it's education or trivia, it could be a clip art, something that makes people have the energetic boost before they read it. And yeah, next slide, please. Right, so this is one very crucial part. So when managing a blog takes a lot of work because it simply isn't posting articles. It's about managing a website, gearing it up for search engine optimization, SEO, coding, and most importantly, having people with a strong command of the English language. Why? Because English is a global language and people from other districts could come across your blogs, your blogs could be shared to them. And also make sure if and when you're using singular to time translations, make sure that you keep them as accurate and stick to the base meanings of the English language and avoid using word to word translations. And along with that, make sure to train other up and coming members in your club, because when the same group keeps doing the same thing, you just generate and recycle old ideas. So when you're getting new people, a lot of them can be able to contribute with new ideas, new trends, and anything that keeps the ball going in a different way. Um, and also make sure to schedule and publish your articles so that this is a very hassle-free process to you. So let's say you're article is supposed to go at 6 p.m. Schedule it at say 8 a.m. in the morning or even before if you can like six or seven hours prior so that you're just set for the article to be published and you can sort of mirror those articles on your social media platforms like you can make a small post make a nice caption drop the article link reshare it get people to read it and also, this is something a lot more crucial than the rest. Make sure that your website's format is very easy for people to access and actually use. Because if your user interface isn't as user-friendly, there is no way you can expect people to engage with your articles and actually give you all the required results you need. And with that said, <laughs> it is your total responsibility to craft a unique brand image and voice for your blog because at the end of the day, 
it's yours. So try to avoid copying other clubs' blogs, their websites. Just, just focus on doing your thing that takes you all above and beyond what you all are capable of doing. And with that said, I'd like to hand over the proceedings to Rotractor Anand. Thank you. Thank you, Akhil. So now let's talk about captions. So, so far we talked about the blogs and all of the articles, but captions are a little bit different, right? So this is what most people will see uh, when they come into your uh, social media. So, um, so when we talk about captions, we use it in WhatsApp, Instagram, and all of the social media, right? So always keep in mind that uh, LinkedIn, TikTok, Threads, and Twitter, they have like, a limited number of words to be used in each of the uh, these specific social media platforms. So keep that in mind when you create captions for those specific platforms, right? And um, make sure that your captions are concise and easy to understand when it's on uh, TikTok threads and uh, Twitter. And if, so we recommend these hashtags when you create captions, hashtag Rotter, hashtag Rotter 3220, create hope in the world and youth for all. So when um, you use these hashtags, uh, make sure you use it with when you post it in your social media pages, okay? So we recommend you not to recommend, you know, you all to not use these hashtags when you uh, post your captions and PR in WhatsApp because, you know, hashtags doesn't really have any function in WhatsApp, right? So, uh, so that's that for hashtags. And so, you know, all of you, are probably aware of how we use the asterisk sign, that's the star sign, in WhatsApp to bold um, specific phrases or words, right, in captions. So when you post these captions in your social media pages, please make sure to remove these asterisks because they do not make your words bold in uh, social media pages like they do in WhatsApp, right? So your caption will include those asterisks and publish that with it in it, so, you know, your standards and like, um, it won't look that pretty, basically. So that's it for captions. Next slide. Right, so um, I know most clubs actually function trilingually uh, and sometimes um, uh, use all three, you know, languages for captions. Um, but this year, as a, as the district, we will not be using trilingual captions. So you all can also follow through on that if you all would like, and on uh, and you know only publish English captions. But if you think that your club would benefit from um, either Sinhala or Tamil captions instead, you all are free to do so. Uh, um, and one thing to keep in mind is you know please proofread your captions very carefully before you publish them. And if you're translating your captions, please do not use Google Translate because Google Translate uh, translate very in a literate way. So if you are not use, using literate, uh, you know, the written language in Sinhala or Tamil or whatever it is, then in, it won't translate properly, right? So it's better to not use it all together and just translate um, from how you would, you know, say it in singular, you, it doesn't have to be a word to word translation. In, instead, it can be just the meaning of whatever you are putting out. You can just say that in whatever language you're translating to, right? And if you are translating Rotary or Rotaract specific prefixes, right? Like this Rotarian Rotaract, a past president, immediate past president, things like that, please keep it in English um, as it is. And um, uh, when translating also, please make sure to, you know, proofread several times, revise several times before you, you know, publish it. Yeah, next page. So terminology, as you know, the district and the uh, Rotaract has a lot of specific terminology. Like, uh, so when, uh, please use the specific way of saying it when you are using this terminology in your like articles, captions, whatever, any and all PR that your club does, please make sure to use the correct terminology, right? So when referring to the district, 
uh, that is just uh, Rotaract District, Sri Lanka and Maldives, please use Rotaract in, in Rotary International District 3220 or the shortened form Rotaract in RID 3220, right? And then when referring to the year, Rotary International year or RI year. And then when stating the year, please say 2020, 2023, 24 or 2023, 2024, right? Don't go for 23, 24 or some sort of other shortened form. Please go by the um, ways of saying. And when referring to the DR, um, District Rotaract Representative, do not say uh, the shortened form DRR when you, know, you are doing speeches or you are inviting the District Rotaract Representative on stage. Instead, say the full form, okay? Uh, so that is it. Next slide. Right, so before we uh, go into the questions and answers, we will send, um, when we send the PR booklet, we will also send uh, a slide, uh, a Google sheet with all of the ter correct terminology and how that translates into Sinhala English uh, to help you all, you know, to keep that up to standard with the rest of the district as well. And if you have any clarifications or questions to ask, you can ask now in the chat or you can just um, ask questions. Right, so we will also send you all the WhatsApp group link as well, but you all can uh, go ahead and then scan the QR code and join um, directly through here as well. So since we did not get any um, questions, I hope all of you understood. I take it to mean all of you understood and not that all of you are asleep, hopefully, right? And before we end, I ask all of you to turn on your cameras to take a group picture. Akil, Akil, are you there? Uh, I'll take. No, I'll take. Samadhi. You. <laughs> okay. Then I'll you take. can count down as well, right? Okay, you will take. No, no, no. You do the counter that I give you. Guys, okay. please, you know, uh, turn on your cameras as much as possible, all of you. Uh, I hope all of you will, because, you know, as editors and PR directors, we don't really get to meet, you know, have events such as this that much. So, yeah. Before we end the session, uh, there's the, our Ravindu Aya and uh, Sasitaki, do you all have anything to add on as well? Hi, Naman. I'm sorry that I'm in session to turn on my camera. Uh, hope I'm audible. Yes. Okay. Um, nothing much. I think the, both the PR and effort team covered a lot. Uh, we'll be sharing the handbook with y'all as well. Uh, so do follow the guidelines, guys. Everything is there. Uh, and if y'all have any issues, any doubts, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to the team. They're always there. Um, yeah, so, uh, let's do great stuff this year. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. After the tea. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we'll take the picture in like in one more minute. Some people switching on the camera. All right, let's take.
Okay, there are five pages, so keep on smiling. <laughs> Three, two, one, cheese. Done. Okay. Okay, thank you guys for participating in the PR and editorial session and uh, hoping to see you soon with another Avenue Directors training seminar as well. So good night and uh, have a great night. Yes. Thank you all. Bye bye. So much for joining guys. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much for guys joining guys. Bye.